Hi friends, I wanted to do a video today and talk about um, something that I think is very helpful to people who have um, insecure attachment styles. So basically people who like myself had um, traumatic childhoods, maybe it was neglectful or abusive. And so for some reason, you know, because of your needs not being met as a very young child, uh, that caused you to have an insecure attachment style, which is affecting you for the rest of your life. And if you don't know what that is, um, I'm going to be writing about that in a book I'm working on, and I'll go into it in more detail, but you can learn on your own. Just kind of look it up and read about it. And it's something that honestly, I think everybody should be aware of. You know, you can find out what your attachment style is because it will help you navigate your relationships better. You're, you're going to understand why you go through certain patterns and why you repeat certain behaviors, why certain things trigger you and what to do about it. So um, I think it's important for people who have insecure attachments to learn how to let go because that's something that is really hard for them. It's going to trigger all of their fears, right? Um, so learning to let go is one of the most important things that you can do as an adult. For people who have an insecure attachment style, this can be incredibly difficult. When you're attached to something, it is because you have given that thing some kind of like special meaning to you. When you are really attached, what you are really attached to is the meaning that you've assigned to that person or thing or idea. So, you know, for somebody who has an insecure attachment style, maybe they, um, you know, find somebody who becomes like their best friend, right? Maybe that person isn't treating them right. Maybe that person is taking the relationship for granted and, um, and hurts them or has betrayed them um, multiple times, right? Or isn't investing in the relationship as much as they should. And it's not really helping them. But for the person who has an insecure attachment, they have assigned a meaning to this person. This is my best friend. You know, without that person, I, I don't know how I'd get through the day. You know, they put this meaning on this person that and that is what they're attached to it's not the actual person themselves because if it that person isn't treating you right you shouldn't be attached to them you know <laughs> it but it it's hard to to make sense of that if you're you know somebody who has gone through this as a child because it's not rational you are it's just sort of feelings that you have and kind of automatic responses to things because you didn't learn how to properly uh, deal with your emotions. You didn't learn proper coping skills as a child. You didn't learn proper boundaries. You didn't learn how to deal with things like this. So really what you need to do is let go of things that are not serving you. Take a mental inventory and write it down if you need to. I think this is one of the best things you can do is to start journaling. Do something like a cost benefit analysis, like take a piece of paper and write down if this is like, say this is a relationship you're in, right? You break up with somebody and uh, you, you find yourself, you can't let go of that person. You're thinking about them all the time. You're obsessing about them. So take a piece of paper and write down sort of like the pros and cons, right? These are the uh, things that I don't like about this person. These are the things I do like about them. And just make a list and you'll find out, you know, you'll start to see, oh yeah, there is a lot of stuff I don't like about this person and maybe the things that they do. Because the way that our minds work, we tend to remember only the positive, only the good things, and we forget all of the negative, all of the bad things, you know, and that gives us a distorted perspective. But there's also the sunken cost fallacy, where if you've invested a lot into an idea or a person, you want to get a return on that investment. You don't want to let go of it because you've already invested so much and it's like, oh, you know, I, I've got to get something out of that. Well, that's the sunken cost fallacy. Just because you've invested a lot into something doesn't mean you're going to get an equal investment back or that you're going to get anything out of it, you know, and it's hard to let go of something like that when you've invested so much, but it is a fallacy. For people with insecure attachment styles, 
Uh, they often felt like they were out of control as children. Maybe they're in a hectic home. Maybe they have an abusive parent, you know, and because of that, they're constantly uh, in a state of feeling chaotic, right? So when they become adults, they tend to have this need this drive this desire to micromanage everything they want to control things people they want to control the outcomes of things and that desire that need often causes the opposite to happen because of the energy that you're putting off when you do that when you're trying to control somebody they can feel that and they don't like it and they're going to try to resist it so while you're being weighed down with that negative emotions and energy, you are not open to the right things or the right person coming into your life. You have to let go of the desire to run from negative emotions and things that you don't want to feel. Things like shame, rejection, hurt, or abandonment because this triggers things that you felt as a child and you don't want to feel those emotions again. You can't run from negative emotions. You can't numb yourself to them. You can't avoid them. You have to learn how to experience them, observe them, process them, and then let them go. Now, a lot of this has to do with your self-image. So your identity and also the power that you give to that thing or that person that you don't want to let go of. For many people who were traumatized or neglected as children, they didn't get a chance to build up a strong sense of self. Maybe they were constantly put down and told, you are bad, you are worthless, nobody will ever love you. Maybe they were made to feel shame when they expressed themselves and tried to be who they were. Maybe that annoyed their parent and they got yelled at and so they just learned to kind of repress themselves. Maybe they had to walk on eggshells, you know, and learn to become people pleasers and change themselves to keep the other people around them happy. So not to upset that person and set off their anger. You know, I'm going to, I've learned that if I act this way, then I get the attention that I, that I don't get, you know, I'm normally ignored, but if I do this, then I get the attention, you know, and then I feel loved and then I feel wanted, but that isn't authentic. Obviously, someone who has an insecure attachment style tends to cling to people who they feel a sense of connection to because many times these people um, who have insecure attachments and who were traumatized as children or neglected, they often feel disconnected from people and things around them. So when they do feel that, they want to cling to it and they don't want to let it go. And so the idea of letting go of that is scary. But you have to stop and ask yourself, are you really attached to that person or is it the idea and the image of them that you've constructed in your own mind? Think about it. People that were abused as kids often engage in wishful and magical thinking. Maybe as a child, this helped you to survive with your soul intact, you know? Uh, maybe if you're you were living in an abusive home with a lot of yelling, maybe you kind of in your you know went into your room and and escaped into story, fantasy, books, and kind of escaping into a different world where you could be a different person, or you know this would happen and and somebody would come and rescue you or something like that. It was this magical thinking so that you could survive your childhood. But as an adult. Perhaps you still engage in your wishful and magical thinking and it is now causing you more harm than good. And sometimes it can be helpful for creativity and things like that, but you have to understand what you're doing and how you use that as a coping mechanism. So you start to see 
that person as part of who you are, that you need them to be complete or whole, or you need this thing, you know, to be complete and whole and to be a good person. You need to be successful. You need to be, um, you need to have this kind of career and, you know, you're tied to that, that idea. That comes from an attachment to those perspectives. But that's all it is, is your perspective that you need that to be whole or complete. Your perspective then is that you aren't whole or complete as you are. So you create a mental vision of what you want to happen. And when things don't go according to that plan that you had, the sort of this idea that you set in your mind of like, this is what I want, to, you know, this is how I see the future. So when things don't go according to that vision, you end up feeling more resistant and that ends up creating even more of those same experiences. So it becomes almost like a cycle or like a self-fulfilling prophecy. But when you let go of that, then you are opening yourself up to new opportunities. You allow yourself to develop a stronger frame and a sense of self that will make you more resilient and happier. You have to remove the emotional charge from whatever it is that you find yourself attached to and unable to let go of and decide that you're going to be a new person and you're going to think in a new way. I'm no longer going to view this thing or this person as essential to my life. You need to get away from a you might need to get away from a specific person. You know, if if it's a, a relationship of some kind, maybe it is a toxic relationship with a parent even, you know, that is not serving you and isn't helping you. Maybe go no contact for a while until you're able to regulate your emotions better and you're no longer addicted and obsessing about it. You have to understand what triggers are associated with that and how to avoid them. But also, you must see yourself as already whole and complete and worthy. You are lovable and you are worth being with. And if that person doesn't want you, then you don't want them. You need to focus on other things. Maybe spend time working on yourself or developing a new hobby or goal. Don't stress about the future. Try instead to just take it one day at a time. I'm just going to get through this day. That is it. And then as the next day comes, think that again. The only thing I need to worry about is getting through this day today, just one day. And then as that progresses, it'll get easier and easier. You know, and if you're tied to some idea of that, that you need to act a certain way, you know, in order to be lovable or whatever you have to let go of that and you have to develop who you, who you really are right the person that you want to be not what you think other people want or expect of you surround yourself with the kinds of people who want to be there for you trust in yourself and that you can get through it don't suppress your emotions but don't sit there and wallow in self-pity either. That's not helpful. What you should do is allow yourself to feel them, kind of observe them and process them, but understand that these emotions come from the beliefs and perspectives that we have. If you change the belief and the perspective, then you can change the emotion. So also, do not try to limit yourself by thinking, oh, it has to happen this way or it's not going to work. That is self-limiting. And then you're, again, you're missing opportunities. You know, you're, you're kind of squandering opportunities and you need to release the addiction you have to either that person, that thing, and the emotions that you feel. Understand that what you're feeling now is only temporary. Try to get outside of your own mind and look at it from the perspective of like an outsider. And if you need to, and I think this would help, have somebody, find somebody that you can talk to and just kind of explain to them what the situation is. Because a lot of times 
when you are, um, you're so inside your own mind, you cannot, you can't see things that like normally other people would see right away and go, oh, okay, that was a red flag. You know, when you get attached to a person, right, and these little red flags start to come up and their behaviors, the way that they treat you or something, your mind kind of like ignores these things because you're attached, you've invested already into it. And so you kind of just, your mind filters that out, right? Um, and this can also be tied to the wishful and magical thinking that helped you survive as a child. So you just kind of ignore that. But if you talk to somebody who is an outsider, who is not attached to uh, any kind of outcome, right? They don't have any uh, horse in the race. And you just tell them the entire story. A lot of times they're going to be like, um, okay, this is crazy. You know, how did you not see this? How did you not see that? Like, you know, and they'll be able to give you the a, a different perspective about maybe that person or that thing or whatever it is that you're that you can't let go of. Maybe they tell you, you know, well, they they have all these negative things about them. They've done all these awful things to you. Why would you want to be attached to that? And maybe you had never thought of that before, you know, on your own because of the way your little mind works. <laughs> um, so. These are things that I think are helpful to learning how to let go. I know it's hard. I know it's scary, you know, especially for people who don't connect easily because of these wounds they have from their childhood, these kind of deep wounds, you know, and, and then when you find something that you think feels familiar, oftentimes the reason it feels so familiar and so comfortable is because you're recreating patterns from your childhood. You know, you think, oh, if I could just fix that person, you know, then I can be happy, then I'll be whole, then I'll be complete. Or if I can just get that person to love me, then I'll be whole and complete. Because when you were a child, maybe your mother didn't love you or didn't give you the attention that you wanted. Maybe this person is very similar to that. Maybe you're recreating that childhood dynamic and that is why there's so much meaning attached to it and why you have so much emotion and investment in it it's not that person it's the meaning that you've assigned to it and it's the fact that you're recreating childhood experiences and you're reliving these cycles you know so that's another thing to consider um, anyways if you have any ideas, you know, or you have any thoughts about letting go of things and how that, how you can do, how it's hard to do this as somebody who's had childhood trauma or somebody who has an insecure attachment style, or if you've had any experience with this, uh, let me know, comment, and tell me what you think. If you enjoyed this video, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already give it a thumbs up and, um, you know, let me know if you want me to make more like this.